I don't really want to think about it because although it was such a like a beneficial thing and it got us through the time, it's just it just reminds me so much of the time we spent, you know, in that big lockdown and I love it, but I don't at the same time. It's bittersweet to be back, <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. We're speaking on Wednesday evening, not long after Victoria got the news that our state was being split again into metro and regional and to probably no one's surprise, lockdown was being extended in the city of Melbourne. This is a massive blow for all of us. Um, of course, we can understand the health situation. Nobody wants a virus running rampant in the community, but it is really, really tough for people who have lost work and have no government support to help them. We're speaking today to Adam Walsh, who is very familiar with the situation of being left stranded without any government support. He's a visa holder from the UK, a hospo worker, and I'm delighted to welcome him to the podcast. How's it going, Adam? Hi, Denny. All good. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, I have this just dreadful feeling of deja vu. Uh, just these very quite specific lockdown feelings in my chest and in my hands and in my body. I, It's quite physical. I mean, how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, that's the sad thing is it's not that surprising. Once we did the first week and we, sorry, there's a helicopter going overhead. That's something that was <laughs> frequent in the last lockdown as well. There was helicopters every night flying over our place. It was so strange. Um, but yeah, it's hardly surprising that it's been extended again. Um, to be honest, it just these things just don't phase me that much anymore, um, and it, it, yeah, it's just it's sad, just sad. Um, tell us a bit about your circumstances. Tell us how long you've been in Australia, on what visas, where you've been working. Just fill us in. <clears throat> so me and my partner Laura, we got here about two and a half years ago. Did the working holiday visa, and then we started on a student visa we were studying fitness which is something we're both very passionate about so it wasn't just a case of let's go on a student visa for the visa sort of thing you know it's something we really enjoyed and as well as doing that we were working in the hospitality sector so as you know which has changed recently we could only work 20 hours a week on that visa so it was um it, we were cutting it fine anyway you know just with the 20 hours work and we had to pay visa fees etc um so let me let me give you a quick breakdown of what we did so we start she's gonna hate me for this because i always forget where we've been <laughs> so we started in cairns we worked our way down we ended up in sydney ran out of money in sydney and flew to melbourne that's where we started the student visa and then i think we got about we got about six months seven months and then the lockdown happened and then it's like Half of the time we've been in Australia, we've been in lockdown. So, yeah, it's, it's a shame, really. <laughs> That's really not the working holiday slash student experience that you look for. Not really. No, because like, we were thinking, like, you know, what are we going to go back <clears throat> to England and tell our friends and family? It's like, are we going to go back with great stories of Australia? All the crazy things, all the great things we've done and seen. Or is it going to be a story of lockdown and COVID, which is... Anytime I talk to someone now here or via, you know, Zoom or whatever with my family back home, all we can talk about is COVID. That's it. Yeah, it's pretty immersive. Um, I guess a pandemic will do that to your life. Um, it does seem to be the main topic, although it did seem that in Melbourne and in Australia, and, you know, I think still in most of Australia, it's not the main topic. People have been getting on with normal life. Um I mean, what's the past few months been like for you? You've, where, where have you been working? What's it been like? And, and did it make a big difference to be able to work a more than um, 40 hours a fortnight? Yeah, so it made a huge difference. Um, you know, we're no strangers to working 40-hour weeks as well as doing other little bits and pieces um, back from the UK. So it was great to be able to work 40 hours and earn that kind of money. Um, the past few months have been great. They've been great, like awesome vibe at work. Like I've been working at Mesa Verde, which is a Mexican restaurant and tequila bar in the CBD. Uh, I think you know Kathy Reed from there. She used to work there with us as the exec chef. Um, and we got a really great family there, you know. Everyone that comes in is is awesome. And just every night, every day we were trading, it, it was great. It was really positive. And then, you know, things start, well, this time very quickly trickling back in. Like it was masks, you got to wear masks. And then the next day, 
we might be in lockdown and then the next day we we are in lockdown you know and all that was just taken away so quickly it's like yeah we just got to adapt straight away it's yeah it's not good and um so you lost all your shifts straight away instantly yeah instantly as did um i'm holding up like my partner laura works at messer with me as well um we're holding on to a fellow brummy ria shout out to you um he was in the same situation um pedro who's in the same situation it's like i'd say 80 percent of our front of house staff and our kitchen staff are exactly the same as me it's lockdown comes into play we get cut and that's it fend for yourself sort of thing and so i mean i met you guys in the last lockdown well actually lockdown before last the big one yeah <laughs> the big um, yeah. and you are very adaptable creative people tell tell the listeners what you guys did and what you've um, gone back to in the last few days yeah so um in the in the big lockdown the biggie it's it started to take its toll after you know a few weeks and we we sort of we start to we understood that we weren't in this for the short term and we were going to have to do something and pull something out of the bag if we were going to stay here because we still we were still passionate about australia there was still a lot of things we wanted to see on this side of the planet you know so um we used to make candles back in the uk we used to make scented candles mainly just at christmas time as a way of being cheap and not buying people christmas presents but uh, everyone loved them and it's something that we knew how, how to do like really well and it just so happened that within our five kilometer radius there was like a candle wholesaler that would sell us the jars and wax and fragrances so we paid them a visit we started making candles and uh, thanks to a couple of shares from yourself on instagram our little candle business really took off and we that's how we made it through that's how we made it through the the last big lockdown was literally just from making candles and selling them on Instagram and Etsy. And so have you cranked that back up again? We cranked it up yesterday and it started with um, Laura did a handwritten little note and we stuck it downstairs in the lobby of our building. It's quite a big building. There's about, there's probably about 60 apartments in it. So we were just saying literally, look, we're starting this back up right now. If you want anything, here's our Instagram. We're at, we're at apartment 410 drop us a, a message and we've had such a great response we've sold out just from the people that we live with just from our neighbors they've bought us out already so we're gonna head down to the james the candle man and buy some more supplies this week and then we're gonna we're gonna kick it back up again yeah it's time what do you reckon that feeling's gonna be like going back into the candle candle man land uh, <laughs> i don't really want to think about it because although it was such a like a beneficial thing and it got us through the time it's just it just reminds me so much of the time we spent you know in that big lockdown and yeah it's great i love it but i don't at the same time it's bittersweet to be back <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do and i like i like people really like the candles and to get good reviews from people and to know that you're literally brightening up people's day a little bit it feels really nice so Mm. Well, yeah, I have to say the candles are really nice and I enjoyed um, buying them as well. They're really good. Um, so, Adam, I, I was, you know, Laura was and I were messaging back and forth before and she was saying it, it makes it hard to commit to staying here. I mean, do, how do you feel about that? Like, does it, does it get harder and harder with each of these lockdowns to see your future, whether it's short term or long term in Australia? Absolutely. Like before the the big lockdown, we were due to go and see our parents and see our family in England. We were going to do a little two week vacation um, back in England, and that got taken away. And now, because we've been away from home for three years, the urge to see our close family and friends is so strong now. Um, and it's just a it's, we really want to see them, you know. But if we go and see them, we can't come back to Australia because of how the situation is. And yeah, it's just such a it's such a touchy one at the moment we just don't know what what to do like i'm going through a sponsorship process at work which was going really smooth and now this lockdown's come into play and all the money i had saved up for the visa for the sponsorship is now getting you know it's going towards rent it's going towards food so where where are we going to be when this lockdown ends hopefully next friday I mean, Australia and the UK obviously have had very different passages through the pandemic. Um, what's it been like to chat to family and friends back home about 
you know, how awful it's been over there? Uh, it's been interesting. It's been really interesting to see the other side of the coin because they just handled everything in such a different way to us. And uh, Laura mentioned today to me that they were celebrating all around the UK because it was their first day without a COVID-related death since the whole pandemic started, you know, and if that was over here, it's like we're locking down. As soon as a few cases pop up, it's like, let's get locked down, let's do this, let's do that. Um, Yeah, they just deal with it completely differently and everyone's blasé to that you know when there was 30,000 new cases a day in England everyone was like yeah it's just another day that's pretty crazy I was chatting to a friend of mine who lives in London she's a lecturer at a um, at a university and she was saying that so many of her students have lost a parent or two to COVID and it's it's quite a common experience I think it kind of puts it in perspective with how things have gone here. It's um, it's terrible to be in lockdown, but I suppose the reason that we are is to prevent those kinds of situations. Yeah, for sure. I mean, thankfully, no one I know has been affected by COVID. It's like I know people through people through people that have unfortunately uh, passed away or been really ill through it and they've got the virus and they've not fully recovered the cardiovascular system's not what it used to be and they've, they got the virus nine months ago you know so it kind of a real bad effect on some people um like my best friend back home got it and he was ill for a day and then he was fine so um yeah we just need to take every precaution but locking down and keeping us all out of jobs for this long with no support and that's, that's not necessarily the best way to do it, I don't think. I mean, for so many people in Australia, this is the first lockdown that they've gone through, I suppose, except for the very first few weeks of the first lockdown without the government support. But for you as per, as on a temporary visa, you're pretty used to going through lockdowns without any support, just being hung out to fend for yourself. Yeah, well, that's it. it like, as soon as we sort of felt the vibe that it was going to be a little bit longer than what they first said, we were like, let's just, let's fire everything back up and let's let's get cracking, you know what I mean? There's no time to waste. Mm. Oh, that's, yeah, that's it. We just get on with it. Um, and Adam, you said, you know, you guys are studying fitness. You're really into fitness. Does that mean that you've got a pretty good regime for staying positive and energised and active during a lockdown? Yeah, for sure. Um, something that, something for me that's been helping me a lot recently is, uh, in the evening, maybe about 9 p.m., I switch my phone onto airplane mode and I don't switch it back on until about 11 a.m. the next day. I've got like a morning routine that I need to do. Like once I physically tick the boxes, I, I'll turn my phone back on then and just having that that bit of headspace, you know, just to be away from all the negativity. Or like cause as soon as you turn your phone on, there's news popping up. There's a friend telling you about something and it's it's good to just be away from that in a time when we can be so involved with devices and the news and stuff. It's important to just get that time away. Absolutely. I reckon that would be transformative for me, certainly, and for a lot of people. Um, what about physically? Like, can you give us um, some tips from your exercise routine or, you know, something that we can bring into our own uh, two hours outdoors? Um, that's it. Just outdoors. Being outdoors is the main thing. Um, just sunlight. Get some sunlight on your skin. Uh, go for a run just get the heart beating get get the heart rate up a little bit like this there's, there's so many beautiful trails around here like i'm in fitzroy at the moment i can make it down to abbotsford to the uh, to the to the river it's within 5k i think we've got 10k now right yeah that's right but i don't I, li- I stay away from the news your your bulletin is all the news i read <laughs> <laughs> oh pressure's on <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah give me a good uh, 61 or whatever we're up to now <laughs> all right yeah literally just just getting the heart rate up and just getting a sweat on that is it oh and uh cold showers shout out to my man vim hoff for that cold showers have made the, all the difference to me recently really so do you get up and start the day with a cold shower or just like any times a cold any time's good for a cold shower any time is good yeah you hit the nail on the head any time is good but in the morning uh, it just switches you on better than anything else. So I do my little routine outside, get some sunlight. Um, I've been just about getting up as the sun's coming up recently because my body clock's gone back to what it used to be, <laughs> having not work, worked in hospo for a few nights. Um, and then, yeah, in the cold shower, as cold as you can. It just, um, it's great, it switches you on. Mm. 
might give it a go. Not sure how go many of your tips I'm going to take <laughs> on, but they all sound very good. <laughs> um, Adam, you've obviously, you know, invested a lot in being in Melbourne and it must have been interesting for you to be in the in the city working at Mesa Verde. How did you see the city coming back? And, you know, given your experience, what do you think is going to be the lag between reopening and the city really coming back to life again? Um, let me think. I mean, we're six stories up. So we, we sort of got busy later on. Because people would, there's, there's no foot traffic for us, you know. It's like if you come into Mesa Verde, you come into Mesa Verde. It's six, it's six floors up. We have got a rooftop bar above us, and we get some traffic from that. But it's not like people can just walk past us on the street and see the see the venue and be like, oh, let's go in. So it, it did take us a little bit longer than usual to start seeing that, seeing those busy nights again. You know, those busy Friday, Saturday nights. So um, I just hope that when we go back, it's not it's not baby steps as much as last time. I hope we can just, we can get back into it. Yeah, I hope so too. And from your perspective, like what, what is it that you've fallen in love with about Melbourne apart from all the lockdowns? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the people, the people and the the animals, the dogs <laughs> over anything else. Our building since we moved in here is just such a, a great community. Everyone's so nice. Like you bump into people in the lift, in the lobby outside, you know, I'm in Fitzroy and there's, you know, there's loads of good little cafes and everyone's just, yeah, the people in Melbourne have just been just been really nice to us. That's well, something that stood out to me. That's really nice to hear because I feel like the government has not been nice to you. Do you, I mean, there's a lot of noise around at the moment about the federal government cranking up JobKeeper again or, you know, giving some kind of income support to people. Do you hold out any hope for some of that trickling through to you as a visa holder or are you just like, yeah, not, not waiting around for it? <laughs> um, usually I'm really optimistic about anything, but the way it was handled last time and what happened last time, I've got, I've got pretty much zero hope for that. And if it happens, brilliant. You know what I mean? So like I can't be in the situation where I'm thinking maybe it'll happen because if I'm thinking like that, maybe I won't try as hard to get these candles back off the ground and to do this and do that, you know? So if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I'm going to get on with it and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Well, Adam, I'm going to grab a bunch of candles because, um, yep, it's winter, must be candle time. <laughs> I know they smell good. Um, we've got a beautiful winter spice candle on, on the way out. So if you want to hit us up, it's Elements Candle on Instagram. We'll just take orders directly through Instagram this time around. Definitely. Well, hopefully you, you won't be candle making for too long, but lucky anybody who grabs one in the meantime. Thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat to us here at Dirty Linen. Um, I wish you all the best. Stay in touch. Um, take care. And whatever the good luck words are for candle makers, um, happy waxing and wicking. I don't know. But, happy um, waxing. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> it's been great to talk to you again. Yeah. See you, Adam. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This.